Right, what does this do? It does that. Uh, I let this animate. That's nice. We've got a wave washing across Matt Parker's Christmas tree lights, which he's done in person and for reality, but he wanted a JoJibra model, which is what I have built for him. Uh, and since it's a model, we can just change all the, all the rules so we can make this thing uh, go sideways across the tree. Uh, oh, it's not going sideways. There we go. This is now going sideways across the tree towards us. Um, in fact, if we want to see the plane as it passes through the tree, that's what's now happening. And we could just let this animate because that's kind of fun. We could show the axes going on. This is a really fun project because when you're building a really physical build like Matt was doing, and go and watch Matt's video if you haven't done already, um, it's really useful to have a simulation so you can check that the the model you're building in Python code uh, is doing what it should and to check the sort of proof of concept. Uh, and this was really fun to build in its own right, even if we never got it to do uh, happen in reality, which Matt did. Uh, so go and watch that if you haven't already. But in this video, I'm going to talk about how I built a file very like this and uh, watch it if you want to. Hey, it's December. That means it's nearly Christmas. And last Christmas, Matt Parker did a video about his Christmas tree, or more to the point, his Christmas tree lights, which he used to make a three-dimensional pixel display. I think they call them voxels when you're in the trade. Some sort of, uh, wherever he dumped his lights on his tree, he turned that into a display he could configure and run some Python code, which uh, lots of people sent in for him to run. The point I'm making is that I made him a Joji profile to help him visualize it, and I used his real coordinates that he spent quite a long time figuring out how to scan and get into his computer. But once we've got those coordinates though, we can we put them into a JoJibra file so that we can manipulate it and see what's going on, and just as a demo thing really. And there's some nice JoJibra features. So let's talk about how to make that file. Actually, um, maybe I shouldn't call it, I don't call these how-to videos really, but someone in the YouTube comments pointed out that maybe they're how-did videos. Yeah, how did I bodge this together so it actually did what it did? I'm not claiming this is the best way or indeed the only way. Uh, it's a way, and even that's debatable sometimes when it's not quite working as you want. But we got there, and so let's just quickly look at some of the features. So I'm running JoJoba Classic 6 as ever. This time though, uh, we're going to work in 3D mode a lot because there's a 3D tree to play with, that's nice, and we're going to use the spreadsheet a lot, which are features really, really helpful to have built into JoJoba. Um, but let's also get a bunch of coordinates. So the, the, the this, this thing started off when uh, Matt sent me this file. So it's a text file. Uh, it's just his coordinates. Now he spent a long time thinking about how to take photos of his tree so that the, the wire of lights, which comes in a certain order, can be mapped to 3D space. And he figured out that's the clever bit, to be honest, <laughs> we're getting the photographic information and turning it into coordinates. Once that hard work is done, we've just got the coordinates. Now they're not really scaled, they're just raw coordinates. So let's see what we can do to work with them. First of all, they've got square brackets around them. If I just copied these into GeoGebra, let's see what happens. First of all, let's pull up a spreadsheet so we can find a place to appropriately paste them in. Um, you can undock this with this little button here. I'm going to work in this window just for the sake of clarity for the video. If I just paste now, uh, it does separate the comma separated values, but it's got the annoying square brackets. To be honest, I just need a cleaner way of pasting it in. So I'm going to undo that. Um, and I'm just going to grab a Google Sheet. I could do this in Excel, but uh, I don't want to for reasons which will become clear. So here's, here's a blank Google Sheet, and I'm going to paste that in. And a Google Sheets, it just dumps all that text in uh, row by row. It doesn't try and separate them. Now, you can do this in Excel. There's a text to columns separator thing in Excel. But to be honest, it's weirdly dodgy and sketchy. It's like a weird menu thing. Whereas actually in Google Sheets, there's there's a command, a split command. Uh, so it says grab the text there and delimit it by spaces, commas, and square brackets. And then the next field just says, do you want to use all of those delimiters? Uh, yes, so let's make that true. And it just splits the text. That's really helpful. I just copy that down. And now I've got three columns, which are the X, Y, and Z coordinates of Matt's Christmas tree lights. Copy, find GeoGebra. There it is. No, that's not GeoGebra. That's GeoGebra. Paste. There we go. Now, the, these are not recognized as points yet in JoJibra. There's just three columns of numbers. But the nice thing about the spreadsheet is that it will accept JoJo commands. In this case, I can just type in I want a point. I want a point with X coordinate A1. Um, you can sometimes click on these cells. I'm just going to make sure it works because sometimes it doesn't work when you click on them just by typing them. And let's make this a bit bigger. 
It's a three-dimensional coordinate, and I can copy that down, and I've got a whole load of three-dimensional coordinates, which are points now, but they're not showing up on the graphics because that's a two-dimensional graphics window. So let's get the three-dimensional graphics window, which will pop up probably in the wrong place. There it is. I'm going to move it over here. In fact, I'm going to close the two-dimensional graphics window because I don't need it for now. And they're not showing up. That's because I suspect <laughs> there's one of them. Uh, I'm just going to zoom out with a, a long mouse wheel roll. There we go. There are all the points. They have labels on, which is a bit annoying. They are faintly tree-shaped. Let's turn the labels off because that's really getting in the way. Uh, I can just select the whole column here, right click and turn off the labels. There we go. Faintly tree shaped. Uh, the thing I know, though, is that these coordinates are the working version and Matt's still working on a way of uh, de-glitching his scanning software. You can see that the software has actually made a line of points at the bottom. It's, it's tried to put points that it thought were wrong back into the tree shape. And he's working on how to do that. But there's a few things to say here. Uh, labels turning off are useful there. I can select all of them by just collecting, selecting that column, and that's useful. Uh, to move around the 3D mode, I'm using a right button drag on a PC. On a Mac, there must be some equivalent. Um, I'll let Mac users figure that out. Hey, comment to help everyone if you want to. Uh, if you middle button drag, uh, it, it sh slides it around, translation actually. And if you, uh, if you sort of drag it and throw it with the right button, you, you can leave it spinning. This is really useful for working in 3D, or rather for working in a two-dimensional representation of 3D. It helps to have some movement. So actually just being able to move it around sort of helps you imagine the third dimension, which you are lacking when you see a two-dimensional screen. Uh, and leaving it spinning has a similar effect. I've probably talked about that before. Now, the XY plane is shaded grey there. I don't really want that. Uh, you can always just turn that off there. At the moment, there's something else to point out, though. It does look like, when you're looking at 3D, that that line and that line are not parallel. Now, they are parallel. Uh, but we're used to seeing things in perspective, which is why I think they look wrong. You can change the projection on JoJoBro. At the moment, it's, uh, what do they call it? Orthographic projection, where parallel is parallel. It was actually, to see it look proper, I, th I prefer working in perspective. And you can see that these lines look like they're sort of um, in perspective now. When you're working with a lot of 3D, I just like changing the projection. You can, by the way, turn 3D glasses mode on. And if you put the red green things on, yes, you can look like you're from Back to the Future and uh, you see that in 3D. And there's an oblique projection, which is annoying. I hardly ever use it. There are reasons why you might, but I'm not going to go into that. There's our tree. It is roughly tree shaped. There's some clearly some points which are on very outlying branches or just wrong. However, let's just turn the plane off for now. Uh, and there we go. If you want to go back to the home view because you're a bit lost, you can always uh, on on. Let's find it. Yeah. So this is a way of viewing from the top, from the side, from the other side. And the home view is at a nice sort of angle like that. So that's a useful way to get back to the rotation you're used to. Uh, and you can leave it spinning just by clicking this button as well. You can always just go back to the home view there. If I click the actual home button, it zooms back into the normal home zoom as well. And that's not what I want for this. OK, I've got some points. What I want to do is model the way Matt used a plane to traverse this tree and light them up. So we need to work on that next. And what he actually did was instead of. Well, let's make a plane first. Uh, how are we going to do that? What I want is a controllable plane, and I'm actually just going to make a slider for this now. A slider lives on the graphics tool in JoJo Graphics 5. So I'm going to need the graphics window up again. But I'm going to drag it so it forms a sort of vert. Yeah, let's can I drag it to the top? Yeah, there we go. If I put it up there, then uh, I don't want the grid on this. I just want a space to put sliders and things. So I'm going to turn the axes off uh, and maybe make it small. And that means uh, I can make a slider. And I'm in particular, I'm going to make a slider uh, called C, I think. Uh, which is going to go between negative a thousand roughly and uh, this is going to be the point where the plane cuts the uh, z-axis the vertical axis at the moment that's just a slider doesn't do anything but it's relatively easy to define a plane right you just it's just z equals c there we go and now i've got a controllable plane that i can drag up and down and already this is an easy way to visualize how matt was making the points light up uh all well and good so far uh weird glitch on on there but Hmm. If you do get lost, by the way, on, on what your screen is centered on, there's a very useful command called center view, uh, center view there, and it will use the last graphics that you've clicked on. So hopefully I've just clicked on the 3D graphics, and I would like to center it on 0, 0, 0. All right, and then I can zoom out appropriately, and that means I'm roughly in the right place to see the tree. There we go. Let's sort that out later on. Um, right, what do I need to do? I think, so I've got a plane now that sort of, goes through the points 
And what Matt did was figure out a way of rotating the tree, in fact, all the points, if you like, using a matrix, which I might do. I might just use rotation commands. They're essentially the same thing. Uh, and leaving that, that plane go up and down, which at least makes calculating the height of these um, of the plane very easy. So let's try that. What I'd like to do then is rotate all these points uh, by some other parameters. So let's make some sliders to do the rotation. The way Matt did it, I think, is he chose a... Uh, a spin around the tree axis and then he chose a spin around the x-axis so let's let's make a be a i could choose it to be an angle i'd like working in in radians to be honest so it's, it's just a number between zero and two pi uh, let's let it go up slowly this is going to be the rotation around the x-axis don't do anything yet and let's make another number b which is going to be the rotation around the the tree axis which starts vertical but i'd like it to, to go with it so uh, that's going to be 0 to 2 pi again. So I'm not going to bother changing the increment there. So let me think about how to transform this. Basically, I'm going to grab all of these points and transform all of them. Let's do it with one point to start with. In fact, if I just... If I hide all these points and just work with one of them, maybe we can get a better handle on how to do this. So they're all gone. I've got one point left at the top here. At the top of the spreadsheet, anyway. Very occasionally, Jojibra, uh, which is not a professional spreadsheet package, has a glitch on spreadsheet. But actually, that's why I'm using Classic 5, because Classic 6 and the online versions glitch more often for me when I'm using spreadsheet with lots of data in. I've got 500 points, and it's doing calculations for all of them. So just working with that top one, there it is. Uh, let's try and transform it. So uh, how would that... Let, let's make... I, I could just write it into the input bar here to avoid any issues. E1. Cell E1 is going to be point D but I want it to be rotated. Rotate D by... Let's just remember how rotate. Yeah, so I want the axis of rotation. Object, angle, axis. So object is D. Angle is... Let's go... I don't know which one I want to do first. Let's try A first. Uh, and that is about the x-axis, I think. Let's just do it one step at a time. No, 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 no. no. Okay, I'll D1. Yeah, D1, the cell D1. There we go. That was the whole point of working in the spreadsheets. Okay, uh, let's check if I change A. There we go, I've got a rotation. It's just spinning around the x-axis. All right, so I presume I'll do that for all of them. The whole tree would rotate. But then I also want to um, spin around the tree axis. So what I'm going to do is need to keep track of the tree axis. Let's call it... I think, yeah, I remember now. It was a really hilarious stroke. The cement tree axis let's call it that that's going to be that's going to be the z-axis rotated in the same way as i've just rated that point so rotated that by a about the x-axis is that right this is where i'm feeling my way a bit let's just see what happens there that's the axis of the tree i think that's all right is that the axis of the tree I think it is. I feel like I'm missing a way of moving it off that line. Anyway, well, that's fine. Let's just go with that. Uh, so I also want to be able to spin the point around that axis. So let's just go back to this one. Rotate and then rotate that point. So all of that by B around. What do I call it? Symmetry. That's hilarious in my head. But now I've got to spell it every time. And now I've got B to let me control that point. So that's sort of spinning around there. Let's just check from a different angle. That's doing what we expect. Yeah. And actually, if we let A be zero, it should just go around that vertical axis. Okay. I think that's doing what it should. Let's let's let copy that down all the way, and we should get a new tree. But it should be controllable this time. Yes. And I can twirl it. Okay, I think that's enough, because now when I move the plane around, it goes through the tree at a different angle, and that was kind of the point. The easiest way to calculate which lights to light up was not to manipulate the plane. Matt decided to manipulate all the points. I'm not sure that is the easiest way, but it's a way, so this is not a how-to. This is how did. So now column E is the sort of transformed tree, and column D, which mostly is hidden, except that one, which I'm going to hide as well, is the original tree. So let's just keep that hidden. And labeling those columns would have been good, but let's not too worry too much. Now, all I really want to do is make them light up. And maybe let's hide this axis. I don't want the label there. 
maybe the blue line is useful to see where the tree is pointing. Okay, so let's do some work on lighting. Well, I think the only thing that is going to control whether I want the points to light up is are they higher than the plane or not? So it's just the Z coordinate of the transformed point. So let's do a column which is just the Z coordinate. It's the Z coordinate of E1. And that's just going to simplify everything. Um, to be honest, we didn't need to try. I, I, if I was just going to calculate, I don't need to do the rotation of the whole lot. I just do the calculation, which gets me the Z coordinate of that. But uh, I wanted to plot them. So that's why this column needs to exist for here. I think Matt in his original video pointed out that this is just a simple calculation. You don't need to see it if you're just going to run it in Python. But actually, what I then if 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 I want a thing to light up, it just needs to be have gone. The plane needs to have gone past it. So let's try a really basic thing. Um, that number minus C needs to be positive. Is that right? Or C minus that number. The whole point about this, I'm thinking hard about it, is that actually I probably don't want another column. I want to change the properties of these points based on that number. Uh, because these points all have properties. Let's just do one of them for now. Always the best way to work with a spreadsheet. Let's get the properties of this point up. Uh, and there's some useful things in here. You can say which uh, screen to put it on. I want a 3D screen. And in this thing is some dynamic colors. Now I'm going to use, you can do RGB, HSV, and HSL. Uh, hue, saturation, and value I'm going to go with. You can make this dynamic. So I'm going to make this point depend... Uh, well, what color should we pick it? Let's, 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 what's yellow? Is that about a sixth of the, I think this is between zero and one. I think that's yellow. Let's make it full saturation. The value is just how bright it is. So let's let that depend on that number. I probably need to do a calculation here. Though. Okay, let's make it bright yellow to start with. Can we do that? Yes. There it is. Okay, let's just do another column. If, uh, I'll do it up here. Easier to see. Easier to G1 equals if uh, C is greater than F1, cell F1, then let's make it 1, otherwise 0. And that, that value I'm going to use as the sort of like on-off switch. So they're all 0 at the moment, and if I drag it all the way up, they eventually all go 1. So if we use that color point, let's let's try it. Uh, that's going to be G1. So this is slightly confusing every time I do this. You can re reference spreadsheet cells in the properties of an object. And if that object is in a spreadsheet, when you copy it down, it should sort of track with it in the way you'd expect a spreadsheet. It's not entirely clear to me that that would happen, uh, but it's useful. So let's use it. Uh, let's just check this one point is yellow now and it should turn off off on off all right let's just do the whole lot copy though that property down it should all depend it should go there we go right now we have it okay so now we've got these points changing color based on the position of the plane um and actually what matt wanted is it to fade away so what we need is a way of uh changing the color based on how far away it is from that point uh but you can see what's going on already i think and if i just if i reset this back to normal we just get a plane passing up the tree and all i'd have to do is animate c and you'd get all the colors going up there so what i'd like to do is maybe make things fade away uh, i'm going to go and have a think about a fade out function now okay i've had a think and what i need to do is get a new judge window to think on because clearly i, I can't think on my own anymore but i have an idea uh, which is that the I know about a nice function which has a smooth curve uh, which is kind of what i want to see uh, so here's a new judge window uh, and fans of the normal distribution know that it's based on the function e to the power of negative x squared um and actually this is i know that that's not the normal distribution but it's kind of close depending on the the, the parameters in there this is kind of what i want i want a function which uh, when I'm close to zero, the distance between the plane and the point, I want it to be high and uh, do it to fade away nicely away from that. So I might just use this function, um, but I, well, I'd, it would be good to have some control over the 
the width of it so I can tweak it. And between zero and one is fine already, so that's that's good. So uh, this is sort of thing. If I just put a parameter, divide it by uh, a, and use a in my thing, create a slider for a. I think this will basically give me a spread thing. I don't want it to go negative. That would be weird. But uh, so let's just sort that out. But roughly, do I want it to go? To, I don't want it to go to zero probably either. Uh, let's just leave it like that and see what happens. I'm just kind of tinkering here. So this is now a spread function. So that would be like a slow fade away, and that could give me a really tight fade. So that's basically what I want. Um, so let's go back to my complicated looking file. In fact, I might need a second graphic. You've got three graphics windows, a 3D mode and two 2D ones. I wonder if I can, this is now getting messy, but let's get this, the graphics two window over here. No, maybe I want it at the top. I don't really know where I want it. That's clearly, that's clear to everyone, isn't it? Can I put it up, up here as well? So I've got a slider view. I've got a little little graphics window here because I want to visualize this function. Let's do it in graphics to uh, e to the power of negative x squared. And I have a spread function. Let's recall it s. Yeah. It's going to go on the slider for s. Where's it going to put the slider? Who knows? Where's it put the slider? If you don't want to put it, check the properties of the slider and in advanced, it's put it on graphics 2. I want it on graphics 1 probably. Uh, that's a bit of a mess now because I can't these window. There it is. I'd normally have these windows separate so I can I can drag them around to see what's going on. Let's just work with that for now. I can make everything smaller in a bit. And hopefully, yeah, that's... I've got the same problem, haven't I? Let's make it not go negative. In fact, we don't need to go to zero, really. I think that's probably all we want. Yeah, well, that's a good start, perhaps. Although, uh, it's going to need to scale it, the, the units we're working on. This is because we haven't normalized the coordinates. Maybe we should have done that first. But hey, not a how-to, a how-did. Let's bodge this. Uh, let's make this scale go to, like, it's about a 1,000 each way, the maximum coordinates. So maybe we need to have that sort of scale going on. Uh, and that means S must go a bit wider. Let's let it go up to a 1,000, I guess. I'm not quite sure whether it's a squared. No, it's not enough, is it? Is that enough? I'm not clear whether it's enough, but let's just go with it. I feel like it, there's a square root thing going on. So in the in the function, where is it? I kind of want x negative x over s squared. Is that going to help? No. I don't want the negative thing squared because that's going to make it positive. <laughs> I want all of that. Ugh. Brackets. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, maybe that's better. Okay, we can still make it tiny. Yeah, okay. Whatever. That's the function I'm going to use. Uh, I've called it F. Let's give it some better name. Let's call it Fade. Fade of X. And now instead of the spreadsheet uh, just calculating over here, one or zero, I want it to sort of fade between. So I'm going to put the distance between the plane and the point into that function. And if it's close to zero, we'll get a one. Let's try that. What's it doing at the moment? It's doing that if command. So actually, it's going to be actually a lot easier. Equals fade of C minus F1. I think that worked. Let's just try dragging the plane around. Yeah, that's changing. I'm quite excited to see if this works now. Let's copy that down. Oh, look at that nice little fade. I, I'm excited. I don't know about you. Look at that. What a beautiful thing. I'm just going to animate it because I can. I mean, it's all small on the screen. I haven't tidied everything up, but it is nicely fading as the plane comes through it. And that's the nice... It's just using that nice exponential function to fade it in and out. Let's leave that doing that for now. And we can make the tree go sideways. And then it will sort of do a fade across the tree. Uh, the weird thing is, you have to turn your head to, <laughs> to look at it. Um, and this is this is classic coding. The, the way we're calculating, this has made our calculation a bit easier, perhaps. Uh, but it's not giving good simulation. So maybe my final bit of this is to tidy it up and also make a version where I can leave the tree fixed instead of that plane axis fixed. Um, but I can spin it around as well. Just checking that works. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, let's reset that. Um, what should I do first? Let's let's sort out the aesthetics. I, the, 
it's quite hard to see. I'm going to I'm going to change the background color uh, of the background. There it is, background color. Uh, I'm going to not make it completely black, otherwise I probably can't see some things. I'm going to make it sort of ooh silver apparently. Five eighths gray. Let's go with five eighths gray. Uh, what's that done? That makes the light stand out a bit. I could turn the axes off. Let me begin to get a tree. <laughs> it's not a great tree shape. Matt, sort your coordinates out. I quite like that. So what's left to do then, uh, obviously we could do all sorts of tidying up. And if you've seen the file I made last year, I had a whole bunch of tick boxes that were controlling all these things. But that's pretty much it. Um, at the moment, I can't control the size of the lights. They're just dots. So we could do that. How would we do that? Let's do that. First of all, let's tidy things up a bit so we don't we're not wasting loads of space. That I'd like seeing that, but let's just leave it there. You can we can change that. Um the art review is useful at the moment, although if I was going to save the file, I would hide that. The spreadsheet I would hide as well. That's probably slowing things down having that on the screen, to be honest. But I want to make a controllable light bulb size. So let's do another column which is going to be the bulbs column. Uh, and this is going to be, it's going to put a sphere around each dot. And that way I can control the size. So I'm going to need another slider to control the bulb size. Uh, let's put it on here. Slider here, please. Let's call this light size. Spell light, please. That's right, light size. And I don't really know how big they should be. Let's go up to 20. Just not sure about the scale here. That's just a slider, and we can make that the radius of a bulb. So let's just do in H1 a sphere around the transformed point, which is E1 of radius light size. This is typing in the box there is a pain because I can't see it all. Whoa, what happened then? It had a little, little moment. With 3D mode and the spreadsheet working hard, it has occasional moments like this. Uh, I don't like it any more than you do. If I'm doing something wrong, Mike Borsch, just tell me and I'll uh, demonstrate how to do it. All right, so that's drawn a blob around it, but I don't know which. I can't see it very well. Let's make it bigger. I can't see it. Where is it? Is it, is it on the screen? 3D graphics. Let's stop this animation. We don't need that. I'm not convinced it's there. Why can't I see it? Sphere on the point E1. Is E1 a point? E1 is a point. Radius 20. Show object. Oh. H1. Doesn't look good. Why is that not there? Hmm, debug, delete, and try again. Let's try just a sphere around the point E1, radius light size. Maybe it's just not big enough. See, that looked bigger. And it's there now. Okay, it's clearly not a very big radius, so let's let this go up higher. 200. There we go. Ah, it's not very opaque. So that's too big. So maybe that's a bit big. At least we can see it. I don't know why it wasn't working in there. Let's try that again in the spreadsheet. We want to have, let's do it up here so we can see it. H1, the cell, equal to sphere from the point E1, I think I used, radius light size. We're going to get that one again. Okay, let's delete the temporary one we had. And let's make it opaque it's got a bit of an opacity yeah, not it's not so it's this weird pink color let's make it we can make it yellow again we could we're going to need to dynamic color this as well but that will do for now let's just check if, if we copy this down whether we get it boom what a mess uh i've got a red one still why have i got a red one? Oh no it's just that when i select it it highlights it okay and i can make them big that's nice almost like veronoi diagrams there which is exactly what they look like. Oh, we can make them a bit smaller. That's okay. That's better. And they will move around because they're attached to the points that move around. It's slowing down already because it's just plotting lots of spheres now. But that's, that's all right. I can handle that. So I need to color them in the same way that we colored the points. 
Um, let's just check, go back to the points and check the properties here. In advanced dynamic coloring, so hue 0.16, saturation 1, value G1. I think I just do that same over here. It's on RGB, let's do that. Hue, the yellow was 0.16-ish, saturation 1, value G1. I've got to choose the opacity, but I'm happy with it being opaque like that. And then this should, if I copy it down, update. And in theory, we'll get all the spheres doing... This is where I worry I'm, I'm cramping Jojo style by asking it to do too much. We've selected all that, paste that. Right, that looks promising. But I'm worried about how slow it's going. There we go. And actually, to avoid it having to blight everything, let's just hide all the points which are inside all those spheres now. I'll show those objects. They should be gone. But it is working a lot harder than maybe it wants to. If I can animate it now, will it do it? Yeah. And I can change the size. Okay, that's... Okay. Obviously, I could add tick boxes to hide and show, like hiding the plane, because in the real tree you wouldn't see this plane. I can just right-click on it and turn it off. And you just see the lights through the tree there. Uh, and then you can just do there and bring it back on. Okay, that's all right. Uh, what I'd like to do, though, is have a version where the plane rotates, uh, not the tree, just so we could simulate what it looks like in the real world instead of coding world. Stop this animation, because it's thinking pretty hard. So uh, I won't bother putting light bulbs, I think. But actually, the key is that the original coordinates are essentially going to stay fixed. That's what the actual tree lives in. Uh, and that's the transformation we're using for the calculation. So... Let's make a tick box that will let us flick between, but uh, checkboxes are really useful. You can use them to hide or show things. When you make a tick, tick box, it asks you which objects you want to hide or show. But you don't have to use that at all. So I'm just going to do uh, use fixed plane. When this is ticked, I'm going to make sure that, that tick box uses the fixed plane. And when it's unticked, I'm going to make sure it uh, fixes the tree. Uh, and it's quite odd if you made a tick box and didn't tell it what to hide or show then it's you can't change its properties to tell you tell it what to hide or show you have to change the object you want to hide or show and that makes sense when you get used to it but not at first so when we're using the fixed plane i want it to show those light bulbs we just made which is all of this so all of h all of these bulbs i'm going to change their properties and say condition to show objects in advanced uh, is going to be the boolean object i just made which is d i spotted that down there so when that is ticked, those objects will be visible. And when it is unticked, like that, they are invisible. And everything is less laggy. Uh, well, actually, when it's unticked, I want to show the original points. So let's make these points. And obviously, I can make light bulbs to go around these as well. Let's make these uh, when D is not true, which is not D, like that. Uh, exclamation mark is the way of writing not. And it turns it into that symbol because it translates that. Um, incidentally, if you want to do and, double ampersand. And if you want to do or, double bar. Uh, and if I press return, it doesn't like it. But if I had another D there, it w would it turn it into? <laughs> I just need another Boolean value. Can I do another Boolean value? No, it doesn't like it. Anyway, those are the ways to write and and all. And I might need them in a bit. But now, I just want when it's not true to show those points. And hopefully that's done that. And that means if it's unticked, yeah, these don't change. You can see that the axis changing. But if I tick it, you see the, those things and true for the plane so when it's fixed plane i want to show this plane uh, so that's going to be d and i need another plane which is the sort of when the plane is translated so let's make a new plane uh and i've just got to figure out how to do this now let's call it brands plane and transform plane equals the original plane was called p um, if I rotate the tree one way, it's equivalent to rotating, rotating the plane the opposite direction, I think. So I'm going to get the rotation I did on the tree. <laughs> Where was that? That's in here. 
delete transform plane for now. Right, grab that. I think I want to do that in reverse negative. So let's just copy that text. Try it now. Transform plane equals. I want the original plane there. And I think I want to go. I'm worried about which one I have to do first, but I'm just going to try this. Negative. I think that's it. That's promising. And let's not use the fixed plane, so. Is that going the right way? So if the tree goes 45 degrees, is I think that is right. So that clearly, I need that line to disappear when we uh, untick that box as well. So that should be D. And finally, I want that new plane to only be visible when we are not fixed plane. So that's working as it was. The plane doesn't move. And now, just the plane moves. And does it spin around? Is that what I was expecting? Hmm, I don't want it to spin around the axis of the tree, do I? I want it to spin around the vertical axis, so I feel like that's got to be Z axis. I'm fudging this. Uh, I could just actually work it out, but but that now looks like it's working. Uh, if I put the axes back on, we would get a better idea of this. So I think that is working. And actually, because I've done the calculation already in the rotator thing, I can just reuse that column over here. So let's just make the points have the same property. I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. So let's just grab the property we had from the light bulbs. Oh, we even got it on these points here. Oh, it's just G1, isn't it? Okay, let's make this. Let's try it. Make this first point have the property dynamic coloring HSV. Hue. Well, let's do these different color. Let's just do. I, I don't know what hue 26 is. Saturation of one value of G1, I think we called it. Not why that popped up. Uh, I'm just going to copy it down. I'm going to assume it's going to work. I'm a bit worried. That looks like it's working. Is that gone green? Nice. Okay. And if I, I flick back to the other one, we've got the plane rotated in the light bulb version as well. Maybe maybe light smaller, and we can't really tell the difference then. I'm a bit colorblind, so I can't tell what color that is. Uh, let's make it more obvious. It is green, isn't it? Let's make the color a bit more obvious. I don't know what blue would be. Just jump up lots around the color wheel. What is what color is a half on the HSV color wheel? No idea. Ah, it's that color. <laughs> like cyan. It's working, I think. Right. Turn the axes off. Let's just let this animate. And what we've got here is a demonstration of the plane marching through the tree. Let's probably just let it increase. Turning the lights on as it gets close. I could just leave this spinning and then my graphics card is probably working pretty hard now. It's like one frame a second. But it's working and I can flip back to actually spinning the tree. And then you can see that, and that's got the asymmetry axis. I'm like, maybe I don't want that one because I've given it properties. I'm just going to re remove these properties and just turn this off all the time. I don't think we ever want to see that. Okay, right. Let's do a bit of tidying because it's really slow to animate because I've done a lot of calculations here, but I'm also displaying the spreadsheet and the algebra review. So let's turn off some stuff. I'm just going to, in fact, I could just cross that and it would disappear, but I'm just going to pop it out. And I've now got an algebra review somewhere else. Where's it gone? There it is. Uh, so I can drag that around and I can take it out of the window. Um, and when I upload files, I quite often do that. It's already looking better, I think. I'm going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close the spreadsheet. I don't want to see it anymore. It gives me a bit more room. Um, and maybe I want to move these to the side. I think that's what I did in the previous file. Now I've got a bit better setup. It doesn't look very tree shaped. That's Matt's fault. Don't blame me. Let's go back to a home view. 
And I, if I wanted to animate this smoother, I could change the, the speed of this slider. Uh, let's just make that go a bit quicker. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. Now, because of the way I've set the lights, I just need to rearrange all this stuff. These are just the controls I've got. That's the control that changes the spread. I could probably put that on graphics too, couldn't I? Did I have that all along? And I moved it back onto graphics one. Advanced graphics two. Uh, yeah, that's, so that's controlling the spread. And that function is nice to see. Let's have a nice tight band on it. There we go. And what I probably want to do is have these three sliders much more centrally located. Oh yeah, and it's just tidying everything up now. You can lock this to a grid. And this is the one that fits between the fixed tree or the fixed plane. Quite like that. And this is the size of the light bulbs, which I don't really care about. Uh, I could add more controls, tick boxes to hide and show things, put the axes on here maybe. I could do a tree in the background. Uh, let's reset this back to zero, upright tree. It'll look pretty similar when we turn these between. Yep. So I think that's it. Uh, I like the use of a nice exponential function to do a fade thing. And actually, to be honest, now I've got the spreadsheet running in the background, uh, I could put some other more complicated rules on there to control the colors of these points. It doesn't have to be to do with the plane. We could have all sorts of things moving around this tree. Uh, but it's just fun to play with in Jojo. I think I've rambled a lot. That's the uh, interactive Christmas tree lights that Matt has been playing with. Um, and he's done, he's gone a lot further, obviously, in Python programming, how these lights physically turn on. And I hope you've enjoyed me talking through how to make the Jojo model of Matt's Christmas tree. See you next time.